Hello and welcome everyone to Cyverse's webinar series. I'm Tina Lee, Cyverse's User Engagement Officer. We invite you to join our free webinars on technology, our platform, and science topics, usually happening bi-weekly. Uh, many of you already use Cyverse and know that we are a National Science Foundation funded project. Um, these webinars help fulfill a key part of our mission, which is to train scientists on how to use Cyverse's computational resources to do their research and their teaching. Excuse me, sorry about that. Um, first, let's take care of some housekeeping and then we'll start the webinar. Today's presentation is roughly 30 minutes with time at the end for your questions. Please open the Zoom chat window um, and you can type your questions there for Il Young and Sarah to uh, answer after they are done. As always, a video recording of today's webinar will be posted later on our website webinar page for your viewing at any time. Cyverse offers intensive trainings such as our foundational open science skills workshop and our container technology workshops. Please visit our website at www.cyverse.org for more information on these key trainings that use cloud-based tools and techniques for collaborative open science. And now I'd like to introduce today's presenters, Il Young Choi of our cloud native services team and Sarah Roberts of our core software team. Il Young developed the IRODS container storage interface driver as part of a project he did when he was still a PhD student as he recognized the opportunity for a more efficient way to connect data to apps. Sarah, who's been with Cyber since 2010 and who largely developed the Terrain Application Programming Interface, an API, that developers can use to access Cyverse's backend services. And she's working to integrate the IROD CSI driver to enable its benefits for Cyverse's users. So let's begin with Il Young. Hi, Il Young. Are you ready? Yep. Uh, hi, I am Il Young in a Cloud Native Services team. Uh, today, we will preview an upcoming update on uh, Discovery Environment Vice Apps, which is Streamline Connects Data and Apps. Uh, Sarah in core software team will also show a demo at the end of the uh, presentation. Uh, let's get started with current system design of the Cyber's discovery environment. When a user launches a Vice app, in the discovery environment. The discovery environment selects one of compute cluster nodes uh, for the app and runs the app on it. The discovery environment then provides users with a screen share or web access uh, to the app for user access. The app makes access to data stored on uh, Cyber's data store or any other uh, external storages for input and output. The upcoming update I present in this webinar is to make data access to the uh, data store more convenient and So how do Vice apps access the data store currently? The discovery environment downloads input data stored on the data store to a local disk of a compute cluster node where the app runs before the discovery environment tells that the tells the user that uh, your app is ready after the, after the app completes the discovery environment uploads output of the app uh, from the local disk to the data store however this design has two drawbacks First, uh, users must wait until input data is completely staged before using apps. If the input data is very large, uh, it will take a long time for staging, so users must wait longer. This is getting worse since the scale of scientific data sets are becoming increasingly large. So for, exa for example, bioinformatics, uh, data analysis apps requires more than uh, tens of bytes of data. So it will, uh, as, as data grows up, uh, it will not work um, in the near future. Second, users must know what input data they will use before they start the apps. If users want to access 
data on the data store other than input data of apps they selected. In that case, they must copy data by themselves manually using I command, or they need to restart the apps to um, include the data missing as input. To address these issues, uh, we developed a new software called iRoad CSI driver. With the driver, input and output data are not copied between a compute cluster node and the data store. Instead, the driver provides on-demand data transfer, which as the apps make data access, the only access to data portions are transferred between the compute cluster node and data store. There are three advantages on this design. First, no data staging time is required. Previously, users must wait until data is fully staged. However, the driver eliminates uh, the staging step, so uh, launching time of app is quick. Second, users will be able to make uh, full access to their data on data store. Previously, users can only access input data pre-selected when they start apps. However, using the driver, users can access all data in their data store home directory or community data sets. Third, when users pro uh, produce output data using apps, the output data becomes immediately visible and accessible via other uh, cyber systems and tools. Previously, output data becomes visible and accessible after the app is terminated and a discovery environment uploads the output. However, the driver writes output data on the data store immediately when the file is closed. So they become immediately visible and accessible. This is very useful for processing large data in a pipeline. For example, some DNA sequence analysis pipelines process um, gigabytes of data in multiple stages using different apps. In this case, the, the updates uh, can make the pipeline more efficient as output data are produced from one stage, apps in next stage in a pipeline can discover and process them immediately. To reveal how it works under the hood, um, the IROD CSI driver mounts uh, data store directories or files on apps containers directory hierarchy. So users will be able to find the data store directory in apps file system. For example, input directories for apps are visible under slash data slash input. Output directory for apps is visible under slash data slash output. The user's data store home directory is also accessible via slash iPlant home slash username. To make this possible, the discovery environment controls iRoad CSI driver, and the driver manages a file system client program we developed called iRoad Fuse Lite. The iRoad Fuse Lite is a program that mounts data store data on, on the local directory hierarchy in Linux system. The iRoad CSI driver and the iRoad Fuse Lite are open source projects that Cybers is developing. iRoad is a backend storage system used for the Cybers data store the iRoad CSI driver provides iRoad access in Kubernetes environment. If you have your own Kubernetes clusters, then you can use the driver to access iRoad or the cyber data store in your cluster. The iRoad Fuse Lite is a file system client program that mounts iRoad data on local, local directory hierarchy in Linux system. So you can access iRoad or 
cyber data store um, uh, as if they are local GSTs. The IRO Diffuser Lite runs on any Linux system, so you can use it in your laptop, uh, Jetstream VMs, or uh, Amazon Web Service VMs. If you are interested in these projects, then please check out their GitHub repositories uh, linked here. Um, we plan to uh, deploy the new feature on early next year. Um, and we also plan to upgrade the CSI driver to improve uh, IO performance, uh, for example, uh, via uh, parallel data transfer. We also need your help for uh, testing and integrate integration uh, to real world science, uh, scientific applications. If you encounter any issues or bugs with the uh, IROD CSI driver or IROD Fuse Lite, please leave a GitHub issues or uh, email to um, support at cybers.org. Oh, um, if you have any use cases or thoughts about integrating the new software to your uh, applications, uh, please email to support at cybers.org. OK, uh, it's, it's time for a demo. Uh, Sarah, are you ready? I'm ready. OK, I will give you a turn. Okay. Okay, hopefully everybody can see my screen. Yes. What I'm going to do is highlight some of the similarities and differences between the current system and the previous system, or and the new system. Sorry about that. We haven't deployed it yet. So this is our production environment. This is running Vice as it currently works. So what I'm going to do here is refresh this page because it's outdated. Okay, I have this running analysis here. I don't need it, so I'm going to terminate that. Okay. First step is that I'm going to take is to launch a Jupyter Lab Data Science app. I will pick this one and I'm going to give it a unique name because I compulsively feel the urge to do that to every one of my analyses. Okay, I'm going to select an input folder. Uh, preferably not one with a lot of data in it. This one does, this one looks pretty good. And an input file. And also a few more input files just because we have a control here, so I might as well use it. I use the uh, file with the typo in the name just because I like typos. What the discovery environment is doing now is it's launching the app, it's defining resources in our Kubernetes cluster. It's also creating a sidecar container that will copy the files, the input files from the data store onto the machine that's running the container. And then it's going to mount that directory where it, where it staged the files into the folder using a host map. And it should be running by now, so I'm going to click this link. And the reason that it's running, I should note, is that the files that I chose were not very big. If the files were on the order of tens of gigabytes of data, it would have taken a while to copy the files from the data store onto the worker node. When I opened up a terminal here, let me increase the font size a little bit. Okay, hopefully I can shrink this much better. Okay. So as you can see, we have the uh, we have the files here. These two files, downloads.standardair.log and downloads.standardout.log, 
are log files that were generated by the analysis itself when the files were staged. This is one of the uh, files that I chose as an input. This is the directory that I chose as an input. This is my file name with a typo in it. And this is just another arbitrary file that I chose. So I can look at the files and it will show me what they look like. And if I, but if I create a file, it's not going to show up in the data store right away. So if I do something like this, I need a name that I haven't used yet. So uh, Okay, so I've got this file here. But if I look in the data store, let me make sure that I'm on the production machine. If I look at the data store, obviously the file is not in my home directory. It's not going to show up there. And also the file is not in the analysis output folder. because the analysis hasn't completed yet and the files haven't been copied back to the data store. And so I'm done with this analysis. So what I'm going to do now is close my tab, go back to the analysis listing. And it turns out that I'm already there. Actually, that is the wrong tab. I apologize for that. Turns out that I'm already on the analysis listing, so I'm just going to select the analysis and terminate it. Okay, the analysis has been stopped, so what's going to happen now is the discovery environment is going to copy the output files back to the analysis output folder, and I should be able to view the files there. And as you can see, the file is there. Okay, perfect. I don't know about anybody else, but this particular sentence has been drilled into my head for my entire life. So I type it everywhere I can. Okay, I'm a little obsessive about clearing out notifications. So we'll do that now. Okay, so the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, I'll open up the same analysis in our quality assurance environment where the CSI driver is deployed. And I'll show you a bit about how that works. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to pick Jupyter Lab Data Science, give it a unique name. An input folder. I think that one should work. And also an input file. Let's pick a closure file just so I have it. And a few more closure files. Closure is just about my favorite programming language, so I apologize for my obsessive need to use closure files. I'm going to launch the analysis. What the DE is going to do here is it's going to once again define the Kubernetes resources. Now this is, um, you'll notice that this page is slightly different from the page that we saw in production. The reason is that. The, um, we added a feature to display more job information when the analysis is, is launched. So what the DC is currently doing is it's creating Kubernetes resources and it's defining persistent volume mounts that access the data store directly using the IROT CSI driver. 
it creates a number of, of mounts. It creates a mount for the input files, a mount for the output folder, and also a mount to your home directory. So that you can access any data that you might not have chosen for an input, but you need to access anyway. So if you launch an analysis and you realize that you need this other thing somewhere else in your home directory, you'll have access to it. Well, I'm opening up Jupyter Lab instance now. Once again, I'm going to increase the font size a bit. Open up the terminal. Okay, there we go. Now, one difference you'll notice right away is that there aren't any files in the working directory. The reason for this is that the working directory resides on the node where the analysis is running. It's not in the container, it's on the host itself. So we can't really put any data into the working directory. Instead, what you'll notice is that if you look under the data folder, there are two directories. There's the input directory and the output directory. And then if I look under slash cybers, now this, I should mention there is one difference between QA and production. Our QA cluster uses an IROD zone name of cybers and our production um, environment uses an, an IROD zone name of iPlant. So in production, this would be slash iPlant. In QA, this happens to be slash cybers. So in slash cybers is where the home directories are mounted. And as you can see, my home directory is listed there. So the first thing I'm going to do is look in the input. And you'll see that the input file and uh, all of the input files and the input folder that I selected are all here. And if I try to write to any of these, it's not gonna work. Permission denied. The reason for that is that this is a read only file system. If you read from the data here, you cannot write to a directory. Next thing that I'm going to do is go to the output. Now, here, on the other hand, I can create an output file if I want to. I thought I hit control D there. Let's try that again. Okay. I seem to have encountered the curse of the demo. So let me see if I can get out of this. Okay, let me try a different approach. Without a VI is installed here, so I'll try cat it once more. Okay. This is not recognizing my control D key sequence. I'm not sure exactly why. So I'm gonna try yet another approach. Remote I.O. error, okay. It seems you, uh, because we had um, the SSL certificate uh, certificate issue this morning, maybe one of the system is not um, restarted properly, I think. That could be. Yeah, we did have a problem with our SSL certificates and for a while we were unable to load any vice apps. So this could be related. At any rate, this is something we'll troubleshoot. This is why we have 
test periods. And this is why we're not deploying this until next year. So we're going to research this and give you an update when we have one. The next thing I'm going to do is look at my home directory. As you can see, all of my files are here. And it appears, oh, there it goes, okay. So as you can see, I can take a look at this file and I'm going to try to write to a file in using this mount and uh, we'll see how that works. Okay, this time it worked. So as you'll notice, I can create files directly in my home directory. So this is all great because if you look in the discovery environment, I can go to my home directory, find this foo.txt file and see the contents. So if you want to share a file with an external collaborator, you no longer have to share the analysis directly. You can create the file in your home directory, share that file with your collaborator, and then they can look at the results without ever having to log into the analysis directly. I should mention that it is possible to, to allow an external collaborator to, or to allow a collaborator to log into um, an analysis. To do that, what you can do is select the analysis and share it. And I'm going to share it with IPC dev. And I'm going to give them, I'll give them right permission. Okay, so now IPC dev, and I happen to have a tab open for the IPC dev account. So what I'm going to do is go into the analysis list here. Oops. That's what I meant to do. Okay. And now IPC dev can log in and do essentially the same thing that I can do. As you can see, the, the terminal is open and IPC dev can see everything in here. The one thing that I should note is that this analysis has my entire, all the entire contents of my home directory in the data store here. So you're going to want to be a little bit careful about who you share this with. You wanna make sure that you don't have anything in the data store that you're not willing to share with your collaborators. If you do, then you won't want to share the analysis directly until the analysis is over. And that is the last difference that I was going to highlight. So what I'm going to do now is terminate the analysis. And that concludes the demo. So please let us know if you have any questions. Thanks. Thank you, Sarah. That's great. Um, there's just one question and I'll read it into the recording for posterity's sake. Um, in the demo on the Q&A environment, why did you specify input files when you already have access to them from slash cyber slash home? And Ilyang had responded and, and Sarah, we are welcome to add more, um, that it's to provide backward compatibility. So I just wanna read that question in. Um, if there are any other questions, feel free to type them into the chat for Sarah or Il Young. And- um, I, I do wanna mention one thing, is that in addition to backward compatibil compatibility, it also allows you to select an input file or folder from outside your home directory. So if you wanted to get something under I plant home shared, then you can select that as an input and you can still access it, even though it's not in your home directory. And same thing with the file that's been shared to share with you by another collaborator. You can select something in their home directory as long as you have access to it. 
great. Okay. Well, I'm not seeing any further questions. So um, thank you, Il Young and Sarah, for working so hard to make it so much easier and faster for our users and for developers to connect data to ViceOps. From some of the comments, it looks like people are excited about it and can't wait to use it. So um, if you're open to bribes to help you get that integrated faster, you just let people know, okay? Otherwise, hope uh, to see many of you uh, next season in the spring for our, our spring webinars. This is the final webinar of 2021, um, and we'll post our next lineup on our website when that's ready. Thank you, everyone, for attending today, and thank you, Sarah, and thank you, Il Young. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.